much. Hey guys, I'm Alexis Wanaroy. I've been working for more than 20 years in the industry, 15 years at DreamWorks Animation as a supervisor. And after those few years in the US, I wanted to come back to France. When I get back, Gortish reached out to me to know if I wanted to be part of this project that they were developing, Arcane. I joined Fortish about 2.5 years ago as a lead animator first, where I had a full team of five animators. And currently, Fortish and I created a Montpellier branch, where I'm currently overseeing 20 people as an animation soup. There is also the animation in Paris, and there is also some animation done in Las Palmas. So we are three different entities of Fortish working on the animation of Fortish Arcane. My role at Fortiche currently is Animation Soup, which equals to a head of animation, but for the Montpellier branch. The head of animation on season one in Paris was Bart Manuri, and I was just a lead animator in Paris, was one of the, I think we were like seven teams of animation in Paris, or eight teams of animation in Paris on season one. Fortis was created in 2009 by Pascal Charu, Jérôme Combe, and Arnaud Delors. So back in 2012, Fortiche were developing the similar style that you see on a clip that was called a Limousine for La Gaviota. The director of Arcane, Christian Linke, saw that clip and wanted to try to do a collaboration with Fortiche on a clip that they were making for Riot, which was called Get Jinxed. So in 2013, with Get Jinxed, when Christian reached out to Fortiche, he did that because of the work they did on Limousine. So he really liked that work. I think Riot was thrilled with Get Jinx's results in 2014. After that, they tried to create another clip with Fortiche called Warriors for Imagine Dragon. So it's another music clip. That's when Christian Linke and Alex E, the creators of the Arcane TV series in 2015 and 2016, with Pascal and Jerome crafted the whole Arcane TV series, the whole Arcane world. So it's after those two clips of Get Jinxed and Warriors that they started to actually do the pilot for Arcane season one. So that first episode that you see was created about six, seven years ago, the beginning of it. So in this time, 2015, 2016, they research the designs of the characters. They make sure that it was going with what Riot wanted. They researched the whole style of the show, the graphic style, the animation style, if it was going to be adult or not, how they were going to approach everything from the background to the animation to all of this. So after the pilot was done, while Riot was trying to get the money for Arcane to be put into the whole nine episodes. Fortish did rise in KDA in the meantime for them, which was to me the, the best clips back then that were done in terms of graphic style. Those were just amazing and much more pushed than Get Jinxed or Warriors. So it was like actually the, the first thing that was showing what was going to be Arcane like and what was going to be that TV series from those two clips. I think it's in 2019 or 2018 when we started the full Arcane TV shows where I joined Fortiche and we started with episode two uh, until the end of episode nine. At Fortiche Montpellier, we worked on episode eight and nine where we did the, uh, the animation over there. And then from two to episode seven, I was in the team in Paris working on those. The whole graphic style has been developed by Fortiche since day one. Riot have been the clients, so they would approve it or not. They would want to some changes so that the heroes would look like their game characters and they would have the same trait, etc. So that the players of League of Legends would be happy and also that Fortiche would be able to develop their graphic style with their way of thinking their characters. And what Fortiche always wanted to do was to create something that was feeling real, that was feeling raw, that was feeling kind of uh, a bit gruesome sometimes, you know, say that, that it was not the, the thing that you would see in all the animated thing, the thing that has been watered down. They wanted for the characters to feel very graphic, to have a, a lot of little things that are not perfect. It's still very appealing. It's actually coming more from the graphicness of the texture, the graphicness of the design, the graphicness of even the background, everything is painted there. So it's giving a very, very different style than anything we've seen in the past. So yeah, it was like steampunk and art deco for Zon, and it was more for Art Nouveau 
and more made out of little things here and there for Piltover. And you can definitely see in images of the show the difference between the two, the one that is more art deco and the one that is more art deco. I think that Christian Link and Alex really develop a story that is actually a real story that is not just to have fights between those big characters of the game, but at the same time, they wanted for those characters to be who they were in the game, you know, to have a similar trait, to have similar ways of acting. So they developed that quite a bit. After that, what Fortiche did is when they had the writing, they tried to push for some cinematographic principles or cinematographic references to make those characters feel real, to make those scenes feel real, to have something very specific into all of them. I'm going to speak more about the animation challenge as I haven't been developing art in anything else than the animation. But for the animation, I think to us, the biggest challenge was to make it feel real. Same thing, you know, it's a very graphic style. In terms of animation, we went for something pretty realistic. We wanted to stylize the realism in a way where we would simplify all the little clicks and things that happens in real life. We wanted to have something that felt still polished and smooth and, and art and anticipated and animated in some way, but with a feeling that the characters were acting real, like they were not gesturing for no reason. They were not moving too much for no reason, trying to keep a pose, keeping them in there for the graphicness of the pose for the actually the composition of the pose in the shots, because that's also something that was very, very important for us is like. The storyboards, the layout and the animation have been the same since, since the beginning. So it's like the storyboards would do some shots and then the layout would copy them. And then even us in animation, we try to match the similar pose, a similar intention, then the storyboards from the beginning. And that's something that helps us having this very cinematographic style. The, the way that they think about the camera as well is very physical live action cameras. They're not trying to have cameras that can do all the things that they can because they're in a CG environment. They really try to keep them simple and efficient so that it was feeling really good. So for the animation part, yeah, I think that was the biggest challenge was to make those characters real. We were doing around 0.7 seconds a day. We were averaging, I think, around three to four seconds a week of animation. I think studios like Disney's or DreamWorks would do three to four seconds. Disney might do two seconds a week. So we are pretty close to feature film quality quotas. So for us, it was just amazing. Also, we have rigs that are very efficient, that are actually in real time. So we're able to play them in Maya directly without having to play blast constantly, which allows us to go much faster as well in our animation process. And the rigging department's been doing amazing, amazing stuff very quickly for us. So it was uh, a pleasure honestly, to work on in terms of rays, in terms of animation, to be able to animate those characters in real time in your, in your animation software was just, just amazing. I'm just super proud to have been part of this. Uh, I'm just so happy that actually Bart Manuri called me over to be part of this show, just very different than anything else that ever been done in animation. So I'm so proud to be, to have been able to be part of that, being able to create real animation without having to overact or to have somebody fall on his ass or his head to make it more fun. No, here it's about how can we make that acting feel natural? How can we make it feel very raw? How can we make him feel like pissed or sad? Or how can we make that crying feel very real? All this stuff has been uh, the super fun aspect of the project. So I've been doing a long career. I was already working on some shows that were a bit more realistic. So I knew already quite a bit of things. I think the main thing that I learned was how to treat characters that have such a graphic style into making them appealing. I was pushing a little bit and that's not only me, but most of the animators were pushing a bit too far. The expressions were pushing a bit too far there animation. So we always had to tone down a little bit of the feeling that it was creating because on screen that it would feel almost uncanny, not uncanny, but too pushed. We try to, to restrain how much we would push animation, like in some other movies or some other project, just because the graphic style is already giving us a lot to go on to it. We didn't have to push for expression and stuff as much on this. And this was quite a big surprise. And now actually I'm feeling like it's pretty much the same on all the shows that I would be working on in the future. I think there's a lot that you can do with understanding the angles of, of 
the head or of the body or of these things without necessarily pushing an expression to create the body language or the intentions of your character. If there is anything else coming up with Fortiche and Riot in the future, as um, somebody that doesn't know, what I would say is looking at this TV series and how good it is and how amazing it's looking and how people are reacting, I'm pretty sure there's going to be other things between Fortiche and Riot. There has been no mocap used in this show. Everything has been key frame. Most people would do references, so we use live action reference that we would shoot or other would shoot or we would find from live action movies if it was actions and stuff. But we do not use mocap. We are just doing keyframe animation on that show. We have very good quotas that allows us to create this beautiful animation, but we spent a lot of time on those. We have a very big team of animators. We're 80 animators on this show for this, and I'm not allowed to show or share any of the references with you guys yet. We use tons of video references on all those shots to make it feel real. Between the time, between the pilot and the episode two, some people stay in pre-production at Fortiche and they created all those animation studio library. And we've been doing them and developing them on the show to try to keep some appeal on those characters. As I was saying, they were really hard. Sometimes people were pushing them too far. So this allows us to be more on model and not to push things too far or too um, extreme. So yes, definitely we did that for consistency and authenticity and appeal on characters. 2D effects is something that was uh, when I started on Gidjix, actually. So on that first uh, Arcane and that first Fortiche and Riot collaboration on Gidjix, there were some 2D effects. Those 2D effects are done by hands. They're done by 2D animators that do them on top of the 3D animation after the 3D animation is done. And everything is done by hand. It's a full 2D pass of effects. They used to do it in 2D back then. And I think it brings such a graphic style as well to the final product. It's the same with those scratches that they do on the cameras as a, as a post process on some of those images to create the jinx feeling that she gets sometimes when she gets crazy. All those were done in 2D on top of what was done. For me, what can I say? I think Fortiche is one of the, actually is today the most looked studio in animation because of the style that they brought uh, from the beginning of the studio when Pascal, Charu, Jérôme, Combe and Arnaud Delar created that studio. They wanted to bring a very, very graphic stylized that none of the other studio would bring. They would always water down their product, but not for Tish for Tish. There's always been about keeping the graphicness and the coolness of this. And it shows on that show by immensely pushing the boundaries of animation, the boundaries of how we do things. The way that they do things is very different than any other studios that I've worked on. Not only in terms of production uh, ways of doing things, you know, like they have much less rigors, they have no lighters, they have a very specific way of doing things, but not only that, but also in the way that they think about their studio. Their studio is a big family. People are just super, and like, I really enjoy working there because they're trying to make it a place where people feel like home, like they have, you know, like foosball or they have places where you can stay with people late at night. You can enjoy, you can, they have, they always trying to, to make it feel like an environment where you could, uh, really excel as an artist and as a person. And I think it's, it shows even us in the, when we got into the Montpellier department, uh, the Montpellier branch of Fortiche, everything for us has been amazing. We have such a beautiful place and the way that they wanted to develop that was to create more quality work for the TV show without sourcing it to other countries. And by that, we were able to create uh, a similar quality of work in Montpellier than we have in Paris. And so it allows them to have the TV shows be done quicker, but keeping the quality of it. We were talking about model sheets or expressions. So yes, we also did some model sheets. I wanted to say that the head of animation on this show, Bart, really wanted for the expressions to be as appealing as possible and the poses as well. And there's been a lot of um, before and after. It's, it's kind of a folder that we had which was creating a lot of the expressions and the poses of the body of like <clears throat> what it was before. And then it was a little bit of a appealing pass and it would just change a lot of things and making it feel more natural and definitely more appealing. I think it's a term that 
we hear in a lot of different animated movies, but in ours, it was the appeal that would come from a painting, looking at that graphicness coming from the textures and stuff. How can we make this feel like, like a beautiful drawing, like a beautiful painting. Another thing I wanted to add was about storyboard. The storyboard on this show are just stunning. They are giving us an amazing cinematography by the choreography that they put in their fights, by the composition that they put, by the angles of the camera that they choose, the framing, the posing of the characters that they, they come up with. They've been helping insanely and they work very closely with Pascal and Arnaud and Jerome on those just to try to create those episodes. To me, I was looking at those episodes in storyboards when I joined the show, you know, like the episodes that you guys are, are watching now. And even in boards, they would be amazing. They would be like giving us all the acting choices and the textures, the paintings in the background and all this artistry. To me, Fortiche is artistry at its finest. You know, those guys, they created a studio where people could just bring their best in their artistry. And that to me is the most important thing in there. You know, I was talking about being a big family and all this, but it's also the fact that they let people push their artistry to their, to what they are good at doing. That's amazing in a studio where you can actually do your art. Me as an animator in there, I could do my art. I could just push for real acting, the angles, etc. Like, let's say are beautiful. And then what layout would do is they would just match that one-to-one -one and that would allow us to really spend the time on defining what are we going to do in acting in this posing that they decided it was streamlining everything from the boards to the animation and it was a one-to-one -one. and that's something that i've always wished in all the studios but at Fortis they did it you know they they went for it they paid them out on the boards they just made it so that they were really nice and then in animation we just had to thought about the performance and how can we make this feel uh, like a real actor, somebody that would be in Game of Thrones or something like that. For us, that was the goal, was this needs to feel real on screen, like they're watching a movie, but that has a graphicness to it that feels not like a real movie, that feels like an animated movie. And what can we push? We can push for all the graphicness, like the 2D elements on it, the scratches, the, the, um, the textures, the paintings in the background, and all this artistry. Those guys, they created a studio where people could just bring their best in their artistry. And that to me is the most important thing in there. You know, I was talking about being a big family and all this, but it's also the fact that they let people push to what they are good at doing, you know, and that's amazing in a studio where you can actually do your art. Me as an animator in there, I could do my art, you know, I could just push for real acting. As an animator, you're an actor and you want for that. You know, you've always been striving for uh, real acting and performance with a bad guy that is not overly funny or this or that, or that has to play a certain way that is just a bad guy and that kills people and stuff is just amazing. So yes, those guys at Fortiche, again, Pascal, Arno, Jérôme, they created something that is different, you know, and, and unique, a unique, it's a unique style, you know, and they brought that from Get Jinxed and that was yeah, like eight years ago or something like this. Voila, I think that's it. I think it's the passion about this show is coming from those guys from the get-go. And then every department creates their best in all this. It's all the departments that create Fortiche.